Hey everyone, this tutorial will show you how to model, UV unwrap, texture, and import a prefab model into Blockade Runner 0.55.1. Alright, so let's get started by jumping into the root folder of Blockade Runner here, and into content, prefabs, and uh, grabbing one of these existing prefabs here, I'm going to choose the radar, and grab the model OBJ, oh, you know what, before I do that, let me just show you, uh, or talk about this for a second, so we've got in this folder, We've got our model object, that's our uh, UV unwrapped model. Our texture diffuse.dds, that is our texture file that controls the color of the object. And our texture special.dds, um, that is our RGB normals map, which controls the light displacement uh, or the light bump. Um, that we, uh, we won't be covering in this tutorial, but uh, um, that'll give you some extra light details there. Um, so let's just grab this uh, model file for the uh, radar and drag it into the uh, our Maya scene here. And I'll be importing it. And if you hit uh, 6 on the keyboard, um, or you can toggle um, this uh, little button up here uh, for shaded view, and uh, we'll just zoom in um, and take a look. Uh, hitting the F key will focus in on the object, and then um, uh, I'll go over some hot keys here um, in the tutorial just uh, so it's not completely unfriendly, but I might skip a few, but uh, to uh, to rotate, you hit Alt left click and uh, rotate around. Um, Alt right click is uh, zooming in and out, um, and then Alt uh, middle mouse is uh, to pan. So if I hit F again, focus back in on this object, um, you'll notice that this radar is uh, rotated um, 90 degrees, and uh, that's because I think um, Blockade Runner is uh, the Z axis is up, so uh, our Y points up this direction, our X is this direction, and Z is here, so. Uh, all your models will have to be on the uh, uh, rotated and uh, uh, their uh, freeze uh, transform or their transforms frozen, um, so they uh, are oriented correctly. And uh, notice how this model is also placed um, in, uh, in in I guess a positive uh, space in the scene. So uh, you're looking at your uh, Z positive here, X positive here, and Y positive here. So uh, just all things to keep in mind. Um, Let's see, one more thing uh, before we get started, uh, just to make sure your grid is the proper size, because um, every meter cubed um, in the Maya scene is a meter cubed, or one one cube space in um, in Blockade Runner, uh, you just want to make sure that you're set properly, so if you go to uh, Window, uh, let's see, Window uh, Settings Preferences, Preferences, and go into your settings here, you can make sure your... Uh, your linear is set to uh, centimeter. You can use meter, but for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to use centimeters. Um, and then also make sure your uh, your grid uh, under Display Grid Options box is set properly. Uh, you want grid lines every 100 units, so every 100 centimeters um, is a cube. And then make sure your subdivisions is set to one. And then right now my uh, my length and width is set to 1,000 units. So uh, so it's a uh, every um, grid square is a is a 10 by 10. Uh, so this entire thing is uh, is 100, uh, or sorry, uh, this is 100, so it would be 400 um, grid squares here. Um, Alright, so back to our object. Um, first I'm going to, uh, I'll just delete this. Uh, today we're going to be um, uh, modeling a, uh, like a little computer terminal, uh, I think it would be cool, um, like a 60s or, uh, or sorry, uh, like, a, like a late 70s or uh, 80s style um uh, uh, some kind of like, uh, yeah, computer terminal thing. So, um, uh, maybe, maybe my dates are wrong. Maybe more like 85 to 88 or something. But, um, all right. So, uh, to start, I'm going to hit the, uh, uh here, one second. Let me just adjust my keyboard here. All right. We're going to hit the space bar and go to create polygon primitives and cube. And I'm just going to, uh, drag this, uh, cube out and, uh, raise it up there, and uh, that'll be approximately the size of our computer. Um, I want to take up about one cube, uh, nothing too large. Uh, if I go uh, and hit shift, uh, right click, I can go to insert edge loop tool, and I'll just toss a couple edge loops down in here so we can start uh, moving our model around. Uh, that should be good enough. Uh, uh, right mouse click and face, and if I hit the Q key, I can select this uh, face and hit W, and start moving it back. Uh, e will rotate it, and I'll start uh, 
building out kind of a computer looking thing where the keyboard will be here, the screen will be here, and um, if I uh, right mouse click and go back to object mode, I can select the object and hit R, and I will scale it since it's a little too fat there. And that's about right. All right. Um, I uh, again, I'll try to cover some of these uh, hotkeys I'm clicking, but uh, it's gonna make the video really long, so I might skip a few. Um, shift right click down will extrude this face, and I'll scale it in, and that will make the uh, that will make our uh, computer screen. If I hit G, it will just repeat the previous command, and I can push that extrude back a little bit. Um, and maybe I'll hit G again and scale this a bit. Um, now, as you're modeling, just one thing to keep in mind um, are the number of polys uh, that your object um, consists of. So, um, right now we've got, uh, this is only 26 uh, polys right uh, or currently. Um, and to uh, bring up this uh, poly count thing here, if you hit uh, space bar and go to display, heads up display, and check right here, that poly count will show up. And um, on the left here, the uh, total um, total verts, edges, polys, etc. Um, and you're seeing, and then just the selected objects is the second row. So uh, a good target here is um, right around. Uh, eh, most objects in the game seem to be around 75 to 150 polys. I wouldn't go much further than that, just because um, if you start getting tens of thousands of polys um, into your, uh, on your spaceships, um, once you start placing a, a ton of objects everywhere, um, it can really start to bog down the game, so um, just something to uh, uh, pay attention to. Um, Alright, so I don't want the uh, the screen to be this uh, jaggy thing, uh, and so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select the face and go to spacebar, normals, and soften the edge, and then if I go back, you'll notice that it's a little... Um, a little softer there, but here, maybe I'll, maybe I'll grab these two and soften those. Awesome. So it's a little, um, I guess, uh, maybe uh, convex. Um, just enough. Um, it might be a little weird, and that's something that you might be able to drive um, using a normals map instead. It might actually look better, and it would be... Uh, lower polys, but uh, I just wanted to show that normals feature, so uh, if you want to uh, create uh, hard edges in one area, or you want to soften an edge to make uh, something look more rounded, uh, that's just something uh, um, that you can do. Um, Alright, so I'm going to probably throw a couple more edge loops in here, um, just for fun. Um, maybe I'll... Uh, that's probably enough there. I think I'll... Uh, select this and extrude this in a bit, and uh, I'll grab this and we'll create kind of like a uh, a little like circuit box thing in the back that I can texture later on as like some computer circuitry junk. Um, I think that's that's about it. Um, the keyboard's a little high, so I'm gonna grab these down here and raise them up. That's kind of more what I had in mind there. Alright, cool. Um, now if I want to make sure this is on the ground plane, I can uh, hit W, um, hold down D and V and snap this little gnomon to this uh, corner here, and then if I um, drag this and hold down X, I can snap it to the grid. Um, and uh, while we're at it, I probably want to um, I probably want to rotate it around. Uh, but now that I've moved my gnomon, um, uh, it's going to rotate funny on the axis. So if I go to uh, modify and center pivot, uh, I can I can then uh, rotate a little uh, or uh, rotate from the center. Uh, if I hold down J and uh, while rotating, it will snap to uh, certain degrees, and I'll easily allow me to turn it around in place. Um, and it's roughly in the in the middle of the square. Um, you can get it exact, but I'm not going to really worry about that. Um, Alright, so that's that's pretty much our model. Uh, nothing too um, complex. I think um, I forgot to extrude this out here. Um, there we go. That's a little better there. Cool.
cool. Um, all right, uh, let me save it actually. All right, so our next step would be uh, to snap the gnome into this corner here um, by uh, holding down D and X. And then we will uh, freeze our transform. Just notice here how we, uh, we translated it uh, several times uh, since we started building in. It's got all this transform junk on here. So let's go to modify and freeze transforms to zero that out. And then we've got a bunch of history here, uh, which has the potential of uh, doing funny things. And so uh, we want to kill our history by going to edit delete by type history and then uh, that's all set um, and that's it that's our model um, so now we have to uh, UV unwrap it the most fun part um, we're going to uh, open up our uh, UV texture editor we're going to window UV texture editor and um, I'll try to uh, minimize that there um, all right, so I'm going to start by, uh, or maybe I should explain uh, UV unwrapping just quickly. Um, uh, this is how you translate a 3D object to 2D space, so then a 2D image um, can be plastered on it um, uh, in three dimensions. Um, and so uh, this can be a tedious process. Um, since we're going to paint the body of this all one color, I'm just going to just slappy happy uh, toss on a uh, automatic uh, UV map. So just if you go to uh, if you hold down the spacebar and go to create UVs, automatic mapping. You'll notice how it just maps everything um, automatically in space, but it really cuts it up in a weird way. And so uh, it's not ideal. You have a lot of edges on your um, on your uh, texture uh, or on your object. If you were to use a, a texture, but since we're using one solid color, it won't be a big problem. Um, I'm going to hit R and just uh, scale these down. And in case you click off of these, uh, you can't um, click back on them. Um, you'll have to go to uh, hold down uh, right mouse and go to UVs. And now I just like them in here. Uh, I just scale them down pretty small since they'll all be one color. It won't really matter. Um, but I want to texture the keyboard and screen um, on here. So what I'll do is I'll go to face mode and... Um, I'll double click and select this edge loop, uh, or sorry, so what, how I did that was um, uh, if you've got an edge loop, you can shift and click every edge, or you can just click one and shift, double click the next on the edge loop, and it will grab that loop. So uh, I'm going to select the screen and go to uh, spacebar, create UVs, planar map, and I'm going to map this by clicking this little edge here. Um, clicking this rotation deal, holding down J, and um, I will rotate it to the right direction. And uh, this is something I toggled earlier, but uh, if you hit this button here, you can see if your UVs are in the wrong or right direction. Uh, I think it, in general, this little uh, uh, little red thingy here will be on the bottom left corner, but uh, just FYI. Uh, all right, so I'm going to change the projection width and height to the same. Um, so they are, uh, so the UV map is scaled, um, or is proportional to the actual, um, model object. Go back to UVs, I'm going to select one UV off in the corner here and go to select, uh, select shell, and that will allow me to grab the whole shell at once. And I'll just place it somewhere in here, um, so it takes up a good amount of space. Our, uh, our texture and end will only be, um, 256 by 256 pixels, so, uh, a good idea to uh, utilize this space as efficiently as possible.